Commissioner Jane Monahan sent this memo to the players. We also continue our active and productive conversations with PIF and the DP World Tour. While we had initially set a deadline of December 31 to reach an agreement, we're working to extend negotiations into next year based on the progress we've made to date. We have made meaningful progress and have provided SSG, that's the private equity group with all those uh, well-known American team sports owner, strategic sports group, uh, with the due diligence information they requested as we move forward in our discussions. We are focused on the finalization of terms and drafts of necessary documents. Right back where we were this time a year ago on Maui, without the defending champion, the sport still cleaved, still looking for resolution. Rory saying the world of golf is heavier than it should be right now. With more, once again, we welcome Todd Lewis. Todd? Yeah, hi there, Rich. You mentioned SSG and that memo from Jay Monahan, that strategic sports group. They are now part of this equation in regards to the negotiations between the PGA Tour and PIF and have complicated the things, uh, things a bit. And that is why negotiations will continue past the deadline of December the 31st. Now, Fans, media members, even players are unsure of what's going to happen moving forward. And we've heard a lot of opinions from stars in the game. But the most interesting perspective this week so far has come from Mackenzie Hughes. Now, he is a multiple winner on the PGA Tour. Actually, Mackenzie was not supposed to be in the century. But when John Rahm left to go to live golf, that opened up a spot and Mackenzie was next in line. Here's what he had to say in regards to the unanswered questions in our game. The fan just wants to watch golf, you know? And I think you, you watch sports for like an escape from other nonsense. But I think golf has brought a lot of nonsense onto its plate. And now you don't get just golf. You know, you get a lot of other stuff going on. It's a bit of a circus. And uh, so I just felt compelled to kind of speak on it that like not everyone out here is just thinking like oh like let's make these purses three million dollars like that sounds great like no it doesn't because in two years the pga tool will have no one sponsoring any tournaments because no one wants to pay these prices so it's a fine line and i think that also <clears throat> there's a lot of guys that feel entitled out here like you start to see all these big amounts of money flying around and this offer and that offer and people think oh why well, I, I stayed loyal like where's my money and it's like you're not entitled to play the pga like you have the right and like you are you have a privilege to play out here and it's it's an opportunity but it's not like anyone owes you anything no one's you know forcing your hand like you don't have to stay you can go play over there if you want um so like this whole you know the tour owes me something attitude i don't like either so kind of a long roundabout way of answering your question but i yeah i just felt compelled to speak on it i feel pretty strongly about it and um just wanted like maybe the casual fan or, or a fan to realize that it's just not what everyone's thinking about. So. Now there are two players in the field here at the Century that are part of the PGA Tour Policy Board. I'm talking about Patrick Cantley and Jordan Spieth. They are very much involved in the negotiations. I had a chance to talk to Jordan Spieth about being on that policy board while trying to play on the PGA Tour, and he says it is very, very taxing. He spent countless hours in meetings trying to get this deal done, but he said he and the rest of the board are determined to make that happen. Rich? Thank you. Eamon, what do you think of what you heard from Mackenzie Hughes? That really illustrates the, the schism that's at the heart of the PGA Tour right here. It's between the best and the rest. Because this is an organisation that's always been run on the principle that the, the vote of Mackenzie Hughes counts as much as the vote of Tiger Woods. But it doesn't. And it's not going to again because live ain't coming for Mackenzie Hughes. And this tour is now being organised and run for the benefit of a very rarefied strata of superstars. And what we've seen over the last few weeks, Rich, has really illustrated where the strengths and weaknesses lie on both sides of this civil war. You see the Saudi strength is in money. The weakness is in a product that is execrable several billion dollars later. 
And the PGA Tour has the strength of stature. It has credibility, it has an audience, but it has talent that isn't contracted and frequently isn't loyal to the tour either. So what you're really seeing is, yes, private equity is willing to line up beside the tour, but it's a Saudi rounding error to wound the tour again, which is really what they do. They, they can't build a product, but they can diminish and to, to the point of really damaging the PGA Tour product. And we're really going to see in the very near future how much leverage the tour has. Yes, you've got all these investors who are willing to line up if they think they're going into business with the Public Investment Fund of Saudi Arabia. Are they willing to go to war? With the public investment fund? I don't believe they are. You know, golf's always had a, a cheeky relationship with uh, four-letter words. Uh, I don't need to tell you that. Nobody knows that better than you. But it, it's the three-letter words, piff and live, that have turned this game inside and out uh, over the last couple of years. And here we are, more than two years down the road, and the game is, the professional game is more full of questions uh, than it is answers. Uh, but one thing we know for sure is that, to McKenzie's point, to your point, the game has been irreparably tilted towards greed. The game of golf enjoyed so much goodwill, so much, uh, so many compliments, lauded even, about the very nature of professional golf and the very nature of what it means to play for the PGA Tour, the pure meritocracy of the sport and the uh, philanthropic aspect of it that was the foundation that no longer really uh, exists. Uh, the game is never going to be the same. Um, live may be in doubt, but PIF is not going anywhere. And so the question now is, how do you coexist? Uh, and I think, you know, we're going to hear Roy's comments later in the show, but uh, I think Roy's comments sort of speak to that. Uh, the best case scenario, at least, you know, sitting here right now is, you know, if private equity can dilute PIF live down to where it's somewhat palatable, absorb, maybe even dissolve live, create a product uh, that not only appeals to a traditional audience, uh, the traditional golf audience, but appeals to a broader audience, a global audience. Uh, some product uh, that we've never seen, never thought of before, really. Uh, and I have a feeling that private equity is going to come in and uh, dilute, piff, and live down to where it will be somewhat palatable. Private equity is going to be asking, what are the potential risks? And if they can't guarantee the star players, they're not going to want to invest. They're not here just to save the game from the Saudis. They are there to get a return on their investment. So that, that leads me to believe there is rapprochement. There will be some sort of a deal that will be palatable uh, to Yasser al Ramayan. But there's the, the rub. There's the rub, though. To do that, they're going to have to contract the players, right. the star players. And, that, well, and they can't go dollar for dollar. Uh, with the Saudis. That's, that's, that's the not Saudis the only happen. risk as well. Proximity to the next atrocity is a risk Correct. that's involved for private equity. It's a risk for the PGA Tour here, but they have legitimized this conversation as of June 6th with the framework agreement and everything we're going to talk about from henceforth onward, it's a commercial dispute. The moral argument ought to continue to be made, but let's be clear, the moral argument lost here because players prize greed over character. Stand on what I said on June the 6th. There will be a running of the bulls for the Saudi money. Uh, in any event, we're hoping an agreement uh, comes to pass soon. Brandel mentioned those Rory McIlroy comments. Uh, Rory was on a soccer podcast called Stick to Football. Here's what he had to say. I was maybe a little, um, I was probably judgmental of the guys that went at the start. And I think that was a bit of a mistake on my part because I now realize not everyone's in my position or in Tiger's position. And, you know, you you get this offer and it's you know what do you do it's you know we're all we all turn professional to to make a living playing the sports that we do and um i think that's what i realized over the last two years i can't judge people for making that decision and um so if i regret anything it was probably being too judgmental at the at the start i think at this point with the <laughs> so this whole framework agreement and and the sort of merger news back in june i think what happened is the tours legitimized what Liv was trying to do. So it made it, made it easier for guys to, to jump. You know, John Ram's not got any of the heat that the, the first guys got for, for going. So it's made it easier for, for guys to, to jump. And I think John, you know, he's, he's smart and I think he sees things coming together uh, at some point. So he's like, okay, I, you know, take a lot of upfront money. Um, which is his prerogative, and he can absolutely do that. And if things come together, I'll just, you know, 
I'll maybe play live for a year, come back, play on the tour, and maybe play some team golf on the on the sort of fringes. Mm-hmm. Um, so I thought it was quite, you know, it's it's a smart business move. It's opportunistic. I think he he sees that things will come back together, and you know, and he's he's in a lucky position. He's exempt for all the majors. Um, there's not one person that wouldn't want him on our Ryder Cup mm-hmm. team because of you know how good he is. So he was in a great position where there wasn't a ton of risk involved for for him to go. Um, but I've I've no problem with John going if that's what he wants to do and he thinks that's the right decision for him and his family. Then you know who am I to say any different at this point? I'm curious. Uh, he seems to be suggesting, you know, Rom's going to be back. They'll all be back in a couple of years with whatever the number was, a couple hundred million, maybe more for John Rom. Um, no worse for the wear. Uh, leads you to wonder, will Rory and Tiger and some of the other stars say, wait a minute, in this new arrangement, new enterprise, where's mine? How do I get taken care of? Well, that's been part of this conversation that's going on for the last couple of years. And how does the PGA Tour make good with the guys who didn't go, which it's a reasonable debate whether or not that's even should happen. I mean, they made a business decision not to go. And it's a decision that I would argue had more character than those who did decide to go. But the idea that they ought to be compensated for that decision, I think is going to become a bit of a thorny issue going forward in terms of what this new dispensation looks like right now. And those comments by Rory McIlroy weren't that much different from what we've heard over the last couple of years and this idea of he had good relationships with a Graham McDowell, a Brooks Kepka, John Rahm, live guys. Not such friendly relations with a guy like Phil Mickelson. So he's trying to keep it civil where he, where he can. But this is what the framework agreement brought around. It greenlit any guy who wants to go to live by saying, these guys are welcome. They're not going anywhere. They're staying here. Their money is staying here. We're just redirecting it to where we want it to go. That's what the framework agreement said. And it's basically given the green light for everyone else. I would just like to know if John Ram is as welcome on live, or it's viewed as positively, because he really was the golden parachutist here. He jumped with the greatest reward, with the least amount of risk and the least amount of blowback. There are going to be guys at live who think he made the gutless move, knowing that he had no cost whatsoever to his career and could possibly recycle himself mm. back into the PGA yeah. Tour in, in short order. But it may have the biggest impact. It was probably the most seismic defection. Uh, look, I mean, Phil Mickelson going, Brooks Kepka going. There was always a sense that at some point uh, the Saudis were going to pull the rug out. Uh, it was going to fold. Like, they were never in for the long game. Mm-hmm. But I think them offering 400, 500, 600 million to John Rahm really did open some eyes and say, look, they are here for the long run, and they have upped the ante. They're not going anywhere. So now I I think it is more pressing to figure out how to coexist. Uh, Initially, you know, I I said, you know, the the, the worst possible scenario here um, is 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 if this deal doesn't go through. Uh, I hate the fact that they they've brought the game of golf to this. Everybody early defected. I hate the fact that they've tilted the game towards this. But at this stage of the game. Live can continue to cannibalize players every single time they have a great run. There's always the threat that they're going to go to live because they're going to find the number. John Rahm was the most vocal of stars, other than Rory, I would say, against the idea of even entertaining the thought of going to live. Correct. Criticized the way they played, criticized the, the idea that he could be bought. Well, he was bought. And all of a sudden, he's, he's parroting all of the same things that every other player that went there said, which was, it's a great format, I'm here to grow the game, proving that he was capable of being bought. Uh, and how many other players do you think would fall in that same line? A great many. Rory was defiant in the early days when this saga first broke. And now his tone seems to clearly be, what can I do? The money wins. It always wins, doesn't it? Well, Sadly. it's certainly one in this case because the PGA Tour has made it clear these who are the folks that we're going into business with now. And they have made the decision in the same way that the Ladies' European Tour essentially sold its soul to the Saudis yeah. several years ago. They don't really give the players an option. What are you going to do, retire or go with whatever Quickly, the future is? Could the tour have, PGA Tour have survived had they not made the decision to do this framework agreement with Liv? Could they have survived? That's question. The PGA Tour is nowhere near penury when it comes to the finances. It would have had to survive on the loyalty of its players, and that has proven to be a very dicey bet to make. 